Ladies and gentlemen, this is your king, George III. Welcome to Hamilton. For tonight's show, the role of King George and, well, all of the other roles will be played by me, <laughs> Nix ASMR. At this time, please silence all electronic devices. Like, subscribe, and enjoy my show. How does a bastard, orphan, son of a whore, and a Scotsman dropped in the middle of a forgotten spot in the Caribbean, by providence impoverished in squalor, grow up to be a hero and a scholar? The ten-dollar founding father without a father got a lot farther by working a lot harder, by being a lot smarter, by being a self-starter, by fourteen, they placed him in charge of a trading charter. And every day while slaves were being slaughtered and carted away, across the waves he struggled and kept his guard up. Inside he was longing for something to be a part of. The brother was ready to beg, steal, borrow, or barter. Then a hurricane came. Devastation reigned. Our man saw his future drip, dripping down the drain put a pencil to his temple, connected it to his brain, and he wrote his first refrain, a testament to his pain. While the word got around, they said, this kid is insane, man, took up a collection just to send him to the mainland. Get your education, don't forget from whence you came, because the world's gonna know your name. What's your name, man? Alexander Hamilton. My name is Alexander Hamilton, and there's a million things I haven't done, but just you wait, just you wait. When he was 10, his father split full of it, dead ridden two years later, see Alex and his mother bed ridden half dead, sitting in their own sick, the scent thick, and Alex got better, but his mother moved in with the cousin. The cousin committed suicide, left him with nothing but ruined pride. Something new inside, a voice saying, Alex, you've got to fend for yourself. He started retreating and reading every treatise on the shelf. There would have been nothing left to do for someone unless a student would have been dead or destitute without a sense of restitution started working, clerking for his late mother's landlord, trading sugarcane and rum and all the things he can't afford, scamming for every book he can put his hands on, planning for the future. See him now as he stands on the bow of a ship headed for a new land. In New York, you can be a new man. In New York, you can be a new man. In New York, you can be a new man. In New York, New York, just you wait. Pardon me, are you Aaron Burr, sir? That depends who's asking. Oh, well, sure, sir. I'm Alexander Hamilton. I'm at your service, sir. I've been looking for you. I'm getting nervous. Sir, I heard your name at Princeton. I was seeking an accelerated course of study. When I got sort of out of sorts with a buddy of yours, I may have punched him. It's a blur, sir. He handles the financials. You punch the bursar? Yes. I wanted to do what you did, graduate in two, and join the revolution. He looked at me like I was stupid. I'm not stupid. So how'd you do it? How'd you graduate so fast? Well... It was my parents' dying wish before they passed. You're an orphan? Of course, I'm an orphan. I wish there was a war, then we could prove that we're worth more than anyone bargained for. Can I buy you a drink? That'd be nice. While we're talking, let me offer you some free advice. Talk less. Smile more. Don't let them know what you're against or what you're for. You want to get ahead? Yes. Fools who run their mouths off wind up dead. Yo, 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 what time is it? Sleepy time. Like I said, I'm John Lawrence in the place to be. Two pints of Sam Adams, but I'm sipping on three. Those red coats don't want it with me, because I will pop, chicka, pop these cops till I'm free. Oh, oui, oui, mon ami, je m'appelle Lafayette. 
the lentil out of the revolutionary set. I came from afar just to say bonsoir to the King Casatoire, who is the best, the moi. Bra, bra, I am Hercules Mulligan. Up in it, loving it. Yes, I heard your mother say, come again. Lock up your daughters and horses, of course. It's hard to have intercourse over four sets of corsets. No more sex. Pour me another brew, son. Let's raise a couple more to the revolution. Well, if it ain't the prodigy of Princeton College, Aaron Burr, give us a verse, drop some knowledge. Good luck with that. You're taking a stand. You spit. I'm a sit. We'll see where we land. But the revolution's imminent. What are you stall for? If you stand for nothing, but what do you fall for? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Oh, who is this kid? What's he gonna do? I am not throwing away my shot. I am not throwing away my shot. Hey, yo, I'm just like my country. I'm young, scrappy, and hungry. And I'm not throwing away my shot. I'm gonna get a scholarship to King's College. I probably shouldn't brag, but dag, I amaze and astonish. The problem is, I got a lot of brains, but no polish. I gotta holla just to be heard with every word. I drop knowledge, I'm a diamond in the rough. Shine a piece of coal, trying to reach my goal. My power speech, unimpeachable. Only 19, but my mind is older. These New York City streets get colder, I shoulder. Every burden, every disadvantage I have come to manage. I don't need a gun to brandish. I walk these streets famished. The plan is to fan that spark into a flame. But damn, it's getting dark, so let me spell the name. I am the A-L-E-X-A-N-D-E-R. We are meant to be a colony that runs independently. Meanwhile, Britain keeps shitting on us endlessly. Essentially, they tax us relentlessly. While well, King George turns around runs a spending spree. He ain't ever gonna set his descendants free. So there will be a revolution in the century. And to me, he says in parentheses, don't be shocked when your history book mentions me. I will lay down my life if it sets us free. Eventually, you'll see my ascendancy. And I'm not throwing away my shot. I'm not throwing away my shot. Hey yo, I'm just like my country. I'm young, scrappy, and hungry. And I'm not throwing away my shot. I am not throwing away my shot. I am not throwing away my shot. Hey, yo, I'm just like my country. I'm young, scrappy, and hungry. And I'm not throwing away my shot. It's time to take a shot. I dream of life without the monarchy. The unrest in France will lead to anarchy. Anarchy. How you say? I, oh, anarchy. When I fight, I make the other side panicky with my shot. Yo, I'm a tailor's apprentice, and I got y'all knuckleheads and local parentis. I'm joining the rebellion, because now it's my chance to socially advance and set us someone some pants. I'm gonna take a shot, but we'll never be truly free. Until those in bondage have the same rights as you and me, you and I do or die. Wait till I sally in on a stallion with the first black battalion. Have another shot. Geniuses, lower your voices. You keep out of trouble and you double your choices. I'm with you, but the situation is fraught. You've got to be carefully taught. If you talk, you're gonna get shot. Check what you've got. Mr. Lafayette, hard rock like Lancelot. I think your pants look hot. Lawrence, I like you a lot. Let's hatch a plot. Blacker than the kettle calling the pot. What are the odds that gods would put us all in one spot? Pop in a squat in conventional wisdom, like it or not. A bunch of revolutionary manumission abolitionists. Abolitionists, give me a position to show me where the ammunition is. Oh, am I talking too loud? Sometimes I get overexcited, shoot off at the mouth. I've never had a group of friends before. I promise that I'll make all 11,000 of you proud. Let's get this guy in front of a crowd. I am not throwing away my shot. I am not throwing away my shot. Hey yo, I'm just like my country. I'm young, scrappy, and hungry. I am not throwing away my shot. I am not throwing away my shot. I am not throwing away my shot. Hey, yo, I'm just like my country. I'm young, scrappy, and hungry, and I'm not throwing away my shot. Everybody is saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I said, shout it to the rooftops. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 
rise up. When you're living on your knees, you rise up. Tell your brother that he's got to rise up. Tell your sister that she's got to rise up. When are these colonies going to rise up? When are these colonies going to rise up? When are these colonies going to rise up? Rise up, rise up. I imagine death so much it feels more like a memory. When's it going to get me? In my sleep, seven feet ahead of me. If I see it coming, do I run or do I let it be? Is it like a beat without a melody? See, I never thought I'd live past 20. Where I come from, some get half as many. Ask anybody why we live in fast and we laugh, reach for a flask. We have to make this moment last. That's plenty. Scratch that. This is not a moment. It's the movement. Where all the hungriest brothers with something to prove went. Foes oppose us. We take an honest stand. We roll like Moses, claiming our promised land. And if we win our independence, is that a guarantee of freedom for our descendants? Or will the blood we shed begin an endless cycle of vengeance and death with no defendants for our descendants? With no defendants. I know the action in the street is exciting, but geez, between all the bleeding and fighting, I've been reading and writing. We need to handle our financial situation. Are we a nation of states? What is the state of our nation? I'm past patiently waiting. I'm passionately smashing every expectation, every action neck of creation. I'm laughing in the face of casualties and sorrow for the first time. I'm thinking past tomorrow, and I'm not throwing away my shot about 90 million times. We're going to rise up another 90 million times. Hey, yo, it's time to take a shot. Time to take a shot. And I am not throwing away my... Not throwing away my shot. I may not live to see our glory, but I will gladly join the fight. And when our children tell our stories... They'll tell the story of tonight. Raise a glass to freedom, something they can never take away, no matter what they tell you. Raise a glass to the four of us. Tomorrow, there'll be more of us telling the story of tonight. Raise a glass to freedom, something they can never take away no matter what they tell you. Raise a glass to the four of us. Tomorrow there'll be more of us telling the story of tonight. They'll tell the story of tonight. Raise a glass to freedom. They'll tell the story of tonight. There's nothing rich folks love more than going downtown and slumming it with the poor. They pull up in their carriages and gawk at the students in the common just to watch them talk. Take Philip Schuyler. The man is loaded. Oh, oh, but little does he know that his daughters, Peggy, Angelica, Eliza, sneak into the city just to watch all the guys at work. Angelica, work, work. Eliza and Peggy. The Schuyler sisters. Daddy said to be home by sundown. Daddy doesn't need to know. Daddy said not to go downtown. Like I said, you're free to go. Look around, look around. The revolution's happening in New York. In New York. It's bad enough Daddy wants to go to war. People are shouting in the square. It's bad enough there'll be violence on our shore. New ideas in the air. Look around, look around. Angelica, remind me what we're looking for. Oh, she's looking for me. Eliza, I'm looking for a mind at work. I'm looking for a mind at work. I'm looking for a mind at work. Whoa, 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 whoa,
someone in a rush next to someone looking pretty. Excuse me, miss, I know it's not funny, but your perfume smells like your daddy's got money. Why are you slumming in the city in your fancy heels? You searching for an urchin who can give you ideals? Burr, you disgust me. Ah, so you've disgust me. I'm a trust fund baby, you can trust me. I've been reading Common Sense by Thomas Paine. Some men say that I'm intense or I'm insane. You want a revolution, I want a revelation. So listen to my declaration. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. But when I meet Thomas Jefferson, I'ma compel him to include women in the sequel. Work. Look around, look around, at how lucky we are to be alive right now. Look around, look around, at how lucky we are to be alive right now. History is happening in Manhattan, and we just happen to be in the greatest channel in the world. At the greatest channel in the world. Angelica, Eliza. Hear ye, hear ye. My name is Samuel Seabury, and I present free thoughts on the proceedings of the Continental Congress. Heed not the rabble who scream revolution. They have not your interests at heart. Oh, God, I tear this dude apart. Chaos and bloodshed are not a solution. Don't let them lead you astray. That was Australian, mate. This Congress does not speak for me. Let him be. They're playing a dangerous game. I pray the King shows you his mercy. For shame. For shame. Yo, he'd have you all unravel at the sound of screams, but the revolution is coming. The have-nots are gonna win this. It's hard to listen to you with a straight face. Chaos and bloodshed are not honestly... You shouldn't even talk, and what about Boston? Look at the cost and all that you, we've lost, and you talk about Congress. This Congress does not speak for me. My dog speaks more elegantly than thee. They're playing a dangerous game, but strangely your mange is the same. I pray the king shows you his mercy. For the revolution, for shame. For the revolution, for shame. For the revolution, heed, if you repeat yourself again, I'm gonna scream. Honestly, look at me, please don't read. Not your interest, don't modulate the key and not debate with me. Why should a tiny island across the sea regulate the price of tea? Alexander, please. Burr, I'd rather be divisive than indecisive. Drop the niceties. Silence. A message from the king. A message from the king. A message from the king. You say, the price of my love's not a price that you're willing to pay. You cry at the tea when you which you hurled in the sea when you see me go by. Why so sad? Remember we made an arrangement when you went away, and now you're making me mad. Remember, despite our estrangement, I'm your man. You'll be back soon, you'll see. You'll remember you belong to me. You'll be back. Time will tell. You'll remember that I served you well. Oceans rise, empires fall. We have seen each other through it all. And when push comes to shove, I will send a fully armed battalion to remind me of my love. Remind you, I remind you of my love.
You say our love is draining, and you can't go on. You'll be the one complaining when I'm gone. And no, don't change the subject, because you're my only subject. My sweet, submissive subject. My loyal, royal subject. Forever. And ever. And ever, and ever, and ever, you'll be back. Like before, I will fight the fight and win the war for your love, for your praise. And I'll love you till my dying days. And when you're gone, I'll go mad. So don't throw away this thing we've had. Because when push comes to shove, I will kill your friends and family to remind you of my love. British Admiral Howe's got troops on the water. 32,000 troops in New York Harbor. As a kid in the Caribbean, I wished for a war. I knew that I was poor. I knew it was the only way to rise up. If they tell my story, I am either going to die on the battlefield in glory or rise up. I will fight for this land, but there's only one man who can give us the command so we can rise up. Understand, it's the only way to rise up, rise up. Here he comes. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've been waiting for, the pride of Mount Vernon, George Washington. We are outgunned, what? Outmanned, what? Outnumbered, outplanned. We gotta make an all out stand. Hey, yo, I'm gonna need a right hand man. Check it. Can I be real a second? For just a millisecond. Let down my guard and tell the people how I feel a second. Now I'm the model of a modern major general, the venerated Virginian veteran, whose men are all lining up to put me up on a pedestal, writing letters to relatives, embellishing my elegance and eloquence, but the elephant is in the room. The truth is in your face when you hear the British cannons go boom. Any hope of success is fleeting. How can I keep leading when the people I'm leading keep retreating? We put a stop to the bleeding as the British take Brooklyn. Night takes Rook. But look, we are outgunned, outmanned, outnumbered, outplanned. We gotta make an all-out stand. Hey, yo, I'm gonna need a right-hand man. They're battering down the battery, check the damages. We gotta stop them and rob them of their advantages. Let's take a stand with the stamina God has granted us. Hamilton won't abandon ship. Yo, let's steal their cannons. Shaboom goes the cannon, watch the blood in the spit spray. Shaboom goes the cannon, we're abandoning Kips Bay. There's another ship in, we just a southern tip in. We gotta run to Harlem quick, we can't afford another slip. Guns and horses, giddy up. I decide to divvy up my forces. They are skittish as the British cut the city up. This close to giving up, facing mad scrutiny. I scream in the face of this mad mutiny. Are these the men with which I am to defend America? We ride at midnight, Manhattan in the distance. I cannot be everywhere at once, people. I am in dire need of assistance. Your Excellency, sir. Who are you? Aaron Burr, sir. Permission to state my case as you were, sir. I was a captain under General Montgomery until he caught a bullet in the neck in Quebec and, well, in summary. I think I could be of some assistance. I admire how you keep firing on the British from a distance. 
I have some questions, a couple of suggestions on how to fight instead of fleeing west. Yes, well, Your Excellency, he wanted to see me. Hamilton, come in. Have you met Burr? Yes, sir. We keep meeting. As I was seeing, sir, I look forward to seeing your strategy play out. Burr, sir, close the door on your way out. Have I done something wrong, sir? On the contrary, I brought you here because our odds are beyond scary. Your reputation precedes you, but I have to laugh, sir. Hamilton, how come no one's got you on their staff? Don't get me wrong. You're a young man of great renown. I know you stole British cannons when we were still downtown. Nathaniel Green and Henry Knox wanted to hire you. <laughs> yeah, to be their secretary. I don't think so. Now, why are you upset? I'm not. It's all right, you have a fight. You have a hunger. I was just like you when I was younger. Head full of fantasies of dying like a martyr. Dying is easy, young man. Living is harder. Why are you telling me this? I'm being honest. I'm working with what a third of what our Congress has promised. We are a powder keg about to explode. I need someone like you to lighten the load. So... I am not throwing away my shot, son. We are outgunned out, man. You'll need all the help you can get. I have some friends. Lawrence Mulligan, Marquis de Lafayette. Okay, what else? Outnumbered, outplanned. We'll need some spies on the inside. Some king's men who might let some things slide. I'll write to Congress and tell them who needs supplies. You rally the guys. Master the element of surprise. I'll rise above my station, organize your information, till we rise to the occasion of our new nation, sir. Here comes the general, rise up. Here comes the general, rise up. Here comes the general, rise up. Here comes the general and his right-hand man. How does the bastard, orphan, son of a whore, go on and on, grow into more of a phenomenon? Watch this obnoxious, arrogant, loudmouth father be seated at the right hand of the father. Washington hires Hamilton right on sight, but Hamilton still wants to fight. Not right. Now, Hamilton's skill with the quill is undeniable, but what do we have in common? We are reliable with the ladies. There are so many to deflower, looks, proximity to power. They delighted and distracted him. Martha Washington named her feral tomcat after him. That's true. 1780, a winter's ball, and the Schuyler sisters are the envy of all. Yo, if you can marry a sister, you're a rich son. <laughs> Is it a question of if Burr or which one? Hey, 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 ooh. I do, I do, I do, I do. Hey, ooh, ooh. Ew, that sounded way too close, like ooh, ooh. Boy, you got me helpless. I look into your eyes and the sky's the limit. I'm helpless. Down for the count and I'm drowning in them. I've never been the type to try and grab the spotlight. We were at a rebel with some rebels on a hot night. Laughing at my sister as she's dazzling the room. Then you walked in and my heart went boom. Trying to catch your eyes from the side of the room, everybody's dancing, and the band stop volume, grind to the rhythm as we wine and dine, grab my sister and whisper, yo, this one's mine, my sister made her way across the room to you, and I got nervous thinking, what's she gonna do, she grabbed you by the arm, I'm thinking I'm through, 
Then you look back at me and suddenly I'm helpless. Oh, look at those eyes. Oh, yeah, I'm helpless. Down for the count and I'm drowning in them. I'm so into you. <laughs> I'm so into you. I look into your eyes and <laughs> the sky's the limit. I'm helpless. Down for the count and I'm drowning in them. Where are you taking me? I'm about to change your life. And by all means, lead the way. Elizabeth Schuyler, it's a pleasure to meet you. Skylar, my sister, thank you for all your service. If it takes fighting a war for us to meet, it would have been worth it. I'll leave you to it. One week later, I'm writing a letter, letter nightly. Now my life gets better every letter that you write to me, laughing at my sister because she wants to form a, form a harem. I'm just saying, if you really loved me, you would share them. Two weeks later, in the living room, stressing my father's stone face while you're asking for his blessing. I'm dying inside as you whine and dine, and I'm trying not to cry because there's nothing that your mind can't do. My father makes his way across the room to you. I panic for a second, thinking we're through. But then he shakes your hand and says, be true. And you turn back to me, smiling, and I'm helpless. Look into your eyes, and the sky's the limit. I'm helpless. Down for the count. And I'm drowning in him. That boy is mine. That boy is mine. Hopeless, helpless. Down for the count, and I'm drowning in him. It is very difficult to sing at this volume. All right, all right. That's what I'm talking about. Now, everyone give it up for the maid of honor, Angelica Schuyler. A toast to the groom, to the bride, from your sister, Angelica, who is always by your side, to your union, and the hope that they provide, that you provide. May you always be satisfied. Rewind. I remember that night. I just might regret that night for the rest of my days. I remember those soldier boys tripping over themselves to win our praise. I remember that dream like candlelight, like a dream that you can't quite place. But Alexander, I'll never forget the first time I saw your face. I've never been the same, intelligent eyes and a hunger pang frame, and when you said hi I forgot my dang name, set my heart aflame, every part aflame, this is not a game. You strike me as a woman who has never been satisfied, I'm sure I don't know what you mean, you forget yourself, you're like me, I'm never satisfied, is that right? I've never been satisfied. My name is Angelica Schuyler, Alexander Hamilton. Where's your family from? Unimportant, there's a million things I haven't done. Just you wait, just you wait, so, so, so. So this is what it feels like to match which was someone who's at your level. What the hell's the catch? It's the feeling of freedom. We'll see in the light, it's Frank, Frank with a key and a kite. You see it right, the conversation lasted two minutes, maybe three minutes, everything was said in total agreement. It's a dream and it's a bit of a dance, a bit of a posture, it's a bit of a stance. He's a bit of a flirt, but I'm gonna give him a chance. I asked about a family, did you see his answer? His answer to fit, his answer to fit. His hands are fidgeting, he looked scared, he's penniless, flying by the seat of his pants. And some boy, does he know it? Beach fuzz, and he can't even grow it. I want to take him far away in this place, and I turn to see my sister's face, and she is helpless. And I know she is helpless. And her eyes are just helpless. And I realize three fundamental truths at the exact same time. Where are you taking me? I'm about to change your life. Then by all means, lead the way. 
Number one, I'm a girl in a world in which my only job is to marry rich. My father has no son, so I'm the one who has a social climb for one, because I'm the oldest and the wittiest and the gossip in New York City is insidious, and Alexander is penniless. <sighs> this doesn't mean I want him any less. Elizabeth Schuyler, it's a pleasure to meet you. Skyler, my sister. Number two, she's after me because I'm a Skyler sister. I love it to set aside. Have to be naive to set that aside. Maybe that is why I introduced him to Eliza. Now that's his bride. Nice going, Angelica. He was right. You will never be satisfied. Thank you for your service. If it takes fighting a war for us to meet, it will have been worth it. I'll leave you to it. Number three, I know my sister like I know my own mind. You will never find anyone as trusting or as kind. If I tell her, if I tell her that I love him, she'd be silently resigned. He'd be mine. She would say I'm fine. She'd be lying. But when I fantasize at night in Alexander's eyes, as I romanticize what might have been if I hadn't sized him up so quickly, at least my dear Eliza's his wife. At least I keep his eyes in my life. To the groom. To the bride. From your sister, who is always by your side, to your union and the hope that you provide, may you always be satisfied. And I know she'll be happy as his bride. And I know. He will never be satisfied. I will never be satisfied. I may not live to see our glory, but I've seen wonders great and strong, small. Because if the Tomcat can't get married, if Alexander can't get married, there's hope for our ass after all. Hey. Raise a glass to freedom. Something you will never see again. No matter what she tells you, raise a glass to the four of us, to the newly not poor of us. We'll tell the story of tonight. Well, if it is an Aaron Burr, sir, I didn't think that you would make it to be sure, Burr. I came to say congratulations. Spit of verse, Burr. I see the whole gang's here. You are the worst, Burr. Ignore them. Congrats to you, Lieutenant Colonel. I wish I had your command instead of Man George's journal. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Now be sensible. From what I've heard, you've made yourself indispensable. Well, I've heard you got a special someone on the side, Burr. Is that so? What are you trying to hide, Burr? I should go. Now these guys should go. What? No. Leave us alone. It's all right, Burr. I wish you brought that girl with you tonight, Burr. You're very kind, but it's unlawful, sir. What do you mean? She's married. I see. She's married to a British officer. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Congrats again, Alexander. Smile more. I'll see you on the other side of the war. I will never understand you. If you love this woman, go get her. What are you waiting for? I'll see you on the other side of the war. I'll see you on the other side of the war. Theodosia writes me a letter every day. I'm keeping her bed warm while her husband is away. He's on the British side in Georgia. is trying to keep the colonies in line. But he can keep all of Georgia. Theodosia, she's mine. Love doesn't discriminate between the sinners and the saints. It takes and it takes and it takes and we keep loving anyway. We laugh and we cry and we break and we make our mistakes and if there's a reason I'm by her side when so many have tried, then I'm willing to wait for it. I'm willing to wait for it. My grandfather was a fire and brimstone preacher, but there, these are things that the homilies and hymns won't teach you. My mother was a genius. My father commanded respect. When they died, they left no instructions, just a legacy to protect. Death doesn't discriminate between the sinners and the saints. It takes and it takes and it takes. And we keep living anyway. We rise and we fall. 
and we break and we make our mistakes. And if there's a reason I'm still alive when everyone who loves me has died, I'm willing to wait for it. I'm willing to wait for it. I am the one thing in life I can control. I am inimitable. I am an original. I'm not falling behind or running late. I'm not standing still. I am lying in wait. Hamilton faces an endless uphill climb. He has something to prove. He has nothing to lose. Hamilton's pace is relentless. He wastes no time. What is it like in his shoes? Hamilton doesn't hesitate. He exhibits no restraint. He takes and he takes and he takes and he keeps winning anyway. He changes the game and he plays and he raises the stakes and if there's a reason he seems to thrive when so few survive then god dang it I'm willing to wait for it. I'm willing to wait for it. Life doesn't discriminate between the sinners and the saints. It takes and it takes and it takes and we keep living anyway. We rise and we fall and we make our mistakes. And if there's a reason I'm still alive when so many have died, then I'm willing to wait for it. I'm willing to wait for it. Stay alive. I have never seen the general so despondent. I have taken over writing all his correspondence. Congress writes, George, attack the British forces. I shoot back. We have resorted to eating our horses. Local merchants deny us equipment assistance. They only take British money, so here's a song of sixpence. The cavalry's not coming. Sir Alex, listen. There's only one way for us to win this. Provoke outrage. Outright. Don't engage, strike by night. Remain relentless till their troops take flight. Make it impossible to justify the cost of the flat fight. Outrun, outlast, hit them quick, get out fast. Stay alive till this horror show is past. We're gonna fly a lot of flags half-mast, raise a glass. I go back to New York in my apprenticeship. I ask for French aid. I pray that France has sent a ship. I stay at work with Hamilton. We write essays against slavery. And every day is a test of our camaraderie and bravery. We cut supply lines. We steal contraband. We pick and choose our battles and places to stake a stand. And every day, sir, entrust me with a command. And every day, he dismisses me out of hand. Instead of me, he promotes Charles Lee, makes him second in command. I'm a general. We. Yeah, he's not the choice I would have gone with. He shits the bed at the Battle of Monmouth. Everyone attack, retreat, attack, retreat. What are you doing, Lee? Get back on your feet. But there are so many of them. I'm sorry, is this not your speed? Hamilton, ready, sir. Have Lafayette take the lead. Yes, sir. A thousand soldiers die in a hundred, hundred degree heat as we snatch a stalemate from the jaws of defeat. Charles Lee was left behind without a pot to piss in. He started saying this to anyone who would listen. Washington cannot be left alone. His device is indecisive from crisis to crisis. The best thing he can do for the revolution is turning front and go back to planting tobacco in Mount Vernon. Don't do a thing. History will prove him wrong. We have a war to fight, let's move along. Strong words from Lee, someone ought to hold him to it. I can't disobey direct orders. Then I'll do it. Alexander, you're the closest friend I've got. Lawrence, do not throw away your shot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's the Ten Duel Commandments. It's the Ten Duel Commandments. Number one, the challenge demands satisfaction. If they apologize, no need for further action. Number two, if they don't, grab a friend. That's your second, your lieutenant. When there's reckoning to be reckoned. Number three, have your seconds meet face to face. Negotiate a peace or negotiate a time and place. This is commonplace, especially teen recruits. Most disputes die and no one shoots. Number four, if they don't reach a peace, that's all right. Time to get some pistols and a doctor on site. You pay him in advance. You treat him with civility. You have him turn around so he can have deniability.
abilities set five two before the sun is in the sky pick a place to die where it's high and dry number six leave a note for your next again tell them where you've been pray the hell of heaven let you in seven confess your sins met ready for the moment of adrenaline when you finally face your opponent number eight your last chance to negotiate send in your second see if they can set the record straight alexander aaron burr sir can we agree the tools are dumb and immature sure but your man has to answer for his birds his words burr with his life we both know that's absurd sir hang on how many men died because lee was inexperienced and ruinous okay so we're doing this number nine look him in the eye aim no higher summon all the courage you require then count one two three four five six seven eight nine number ten paces fire Fun. What is the meaning of this? Mr. Burr, get a medic for the general. Yes, sir. Lee, you will never agree with me, but believe me, these young men don't speak for me. Thank you for your service. Let's ride. Hamilton, meet me inside. Son, don't call me son. This war is hard enough without infighting. Lee called you out. We called his bluff. You solve nothing. You aggravate our allies to the south. You're absolutely right. John should have shot him in the mouth. That would have shut him up, son. I'm not your son. Watch your tone. I am not a maiden in needing of defending. I am grown. Charles Lee, Thomas Conway, those men take your name and they rake it through the mud. My name's been through a lot. I can take it. Well, I don't have your name. I don't have your titles. I don't have your land. But, but if you know, if you give me a command of a battalion, a group of men to lead, I could fly above my station after the war. Or you could die and we need you alive. I'm more than willing to die. Your wife, the wife needs you alive. Son, I need you alive. Go home, Alexander. That is an order from your commander. Go home. Look around, look around at how lucky we are to be alive right now. Look around, look around. How long have you known? A month or so, Eliza, you should have told me. I wrote to the general a month ago, begged him to send you home. You should have told me. I'm not sorry. I knew you'd fight until the war was won, but you deserve a chance to meet our son. Look around, look around at how lucky we are to be alive right now. Will you relish being a poor man's wife, unable to provide for your life? I relish being your wife. Look around, look around. Look at where you are. Look at where you started. The fact that you're alive is a miracle. Just stay alive. <laughs> that would be enough. And if this child shares a fraction of your smile, or a fragment of your mind, look at world. That would be enough. I don't pretend to know the challenges you're facing you keep erasing and creating in your mind, but I'm not afraid. I know who I married. So long as you come home at the end of the day, that would be enough. We don't need a legacy. We don't need money. If I could grant you peace of mind, if you could let me inside your heart, let me be a part of the narrative and the story they will write someday. Let this moment be the first chapter where you decide to stay. And I could be enough. And we could be enough. That would be enough. How does a ragtag volunteer army in need of a shower somehow defeat a global superpower? How do we emerge victorious from the quagmire, leave the battlefield waving Betsy Ross's flag higher? Yo, turns out we have a secret weapon, an immigrant you know and love who's unafraid to step in. He's constantly confusing, confounding the British henchmen. Everyone give it up for America's favorite fighting Frenchman. 
I'm taking this horse by the reins, making red coats red with blood stains, and I'm never gonna stop until I'm like I'm dropping burn them up and scatter the remains. I'm watch me engage in them, escaping them, enraging them. I, I go to France for more funds, come back with more guns and chips, and so the balance shifts. We rendezvous with Rochambeau, consolidate their gifts. We can end this war in Yorktown, cut them off at sea, but for this to succeed, there is someone else we need, I know. So everybody knows what to do in the trench and into a different fluid of Benjamin. So you're gonna have to use them eventually. What they're gonna do on the Benjamin? No one has more resilience or matches my practical tactical brilliance. You want to fight BLM back? I need my right hand man back. Yo, get your right hand man back. You know, you gotta get your right hand man back. I mean, you gotta put them on the letter, but this one's the better. Get your right hand man back, Alexander Hamilton. The troops are waiting in the field for you. If you join us right now, together we can turn the tide. Oh, Alexander Hamilton. I have soldiers who will yield for you. If we manage to get this right, they'll surrender by early light. The world will never be the same, Alexander. I was younger than you are now, when I was given my first command. I led my men straight into a massacre and witnessed their deaths firsthand. I've made every mistake and felt the shame rise in me. And even now I lie awake, knowing history has its eyes on me. Let me tell you what I wish I'd known when I was young and dreamed of glory. You have no control who lives, who dies, who tells your story. I know that we can win. I know that greatness lies in you. But remember from here on in, history has its eyes on you. The Battle of Yorktown, 1781. Monsieur Hamilton, Monsieur Lafayette, in command where you belong. How you say, uh, no sweat? We're finally on the field, we've had quite a run. Immigrants, we get the job done. So what happens if we win? I go back to France. I bring freedom to my people if I'm given the chance. We'll be with you when we do. Go, lead your men. I'll see you on the other side till we meet again. Let's go. I am not throwing away my shot. I am not throwing away my shot. Hey yo, I'm just like my country. I'm young, scrappy, and hungry, and I'm not throwing away my shot. I am not throwing away my shot till the world turns upside down. I imagine death so much it feels more like a memory. This is where it gets me, on my feet, the enemy ahead of me. If this is the end of me, at least I have a friend with me, weapon in my hand, a command in my men with me. Then I remember my allies is expecting me. Not only that, my allies is expecting we gotta go, gotta get the job done, gotta start a new nation, gotta meet my son, take the bullets out your gun. What? Yeah, the bullets out your gun. We move under cover and we move as one. Through the night we have one shot to live another day. We cannot let a stray gunshot give us away. We will fight up close, seize this moment and stay in it. It's either that or meet the business end of a bayonet. The co-word is Rochambeau, dig me? You have your orders, now go men, go. And so the American experiment begins with my friends all scattered to the winds. Lawrence is in South Carolina redefining bravery. We'll never be free until we end slavery. When we finally drive the British away, Lafayette is there waiting in Chesapeake Bay. How did we know that this plan would work? We had a spy on the inside. That's right, Hercules Mulligan, a tailor spying on the British government. I take their measurements, information, and then I smuggle it. To my brother's revolutionary covenant, I'm running with the Sons of Liberty, and I am loving it. See, that's what happens when you're up against the ruffians. We in the shit now, somebody's gotta shovel it. Hercules Mulligan, I need no introduction. When you knock me down, I get the F back up again. After a week of fighting, a young man in a red coat stands on a parapet. 
We lower our guns as he frantically waves a white handkerchief. And just like that, it's over. We tend to our wounded. We count our dead. Black and white soldiers wonder alike if this really means freedom. Not yet. We negotiate the terms of surrender. I see George Washington smile. We escort their men out of Yorktown. They stagger home single file. Tens of thousands of people flood the street. There are screams and church bells ringing. And as our, as our fallen foes retreat, I hear the drinking song they're singing. The world turned upside down. 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 Freedom for America, freedom for France. Gotta start a new nation, gotta meet my son. We won, we won, we won, we won. The world turned upside down. They say the price of my love. Why do I keep going Australian? They say, the price of my love's not a price that they're willing to pay. Insane. You cheat with the French, now I'm fighting with France and with Spain. I'm so blue. I thought that we'd make an arrangement when you went away. You were mine to subdue. Well, even despite our estrangement, I've got a small query for you. What comes next? You've been freed. Do you know how hard it is to lead? You're on your own. Awesome. Wow. Do you have a clue what happens now? Oceans rise. Empires fall. Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos own the top of the mountains for when the ice caps melt. It's much harder when it's all your call. All alone across the sea. When your people say they hate you, don't come crawling back to me. Da 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 You're on your own. Dear Theodosia, what to say to you? You have my eyes, you. You have your mother's name. When you came into the world, you cried, and it broke my heart. I'm dedicating every day to you. Domestic life was never quite my style. When you smile, you knock me out, I fall apart. And I thought I was so smart. You will come of age with our young nation. We'll bleed and fight for you. We'll make it right for you. If we lay a strong enough foundation, we'll pass it on to you. We'll give the world to you and you'll blow us all away someday. Someday. Oh, Philip, when you smile, I am undone, my son. Look at my son. Pride is not the word I'm looking for. There is so much more inside me now. Oh, Philip, you outshine the morning sun, my son. When you smile, I fall apart. And I thought I was so smart. My father wasn't around. I swear that I'll be around for you. I'll do whatever it takes. I'll make a million mistakes. I'll make the world safe and sound for you. You will come of age with our young nation. We'll bleed and fight for you. We'll make it right for you. If we lay a strong enough foundation, we'll pass it on to you. We'll give the world to you and you'll blow us all away someday. Someday, yeah, you'll blow us all away someday. Someday. I may not live to see our glory. Alexander, there's a letter for you. It's from John Lawrence, I'll read it but I will gladly join the fight. No, it's from his father. His father? And when our children tell our story, will you read it for me? 
they'll tell the story of tonight. On Tuesday, the 27th, my son was killed in a gunfight against British troops retreating from South Carolina. The war was already over, and as you know, John dreamed of emancipating and returning 3,000 men for the first all-black military regiment. His dream of freedom for these men dies with him. Tomorrow there'll be more of us. Alexander, are you alright? I have so much work to do. After the war, I went back to New York. After the war, I went back to New York. I finished up my studies and I practiced law. I practiced law per work next door. Even though we started at the very same time, Alexander Hamilton began to climb. How to account for his rise to the top? Man, the man is non-stop. Gentlemen of the jury, I'm curious, bear with me. Are you aware that we're making history? This is the first murder trial of our brand new nation, the liberty behind deliberation. I intend to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt with my assistant counsel, co-counsel Hamilton, sit down our client, Levy Weeks is innocent, clear for his witness. That's all you had to say. Okay, one more thing. Why do you assume you're the smartest in the room? Why do you assume you're the smartest in the room? Why do you assume you're the smartest in the room? Soon that attitude may be your doom. Why do you write like you're running out of time? Write day and night like you're running out of time. Every day you fight like you're running out of time. Keep on fighting in the meantime. Corruption's such an old song that we can sing along in harmony and nowhere is it stronger than in Albany. The colony's economy is increasingly stalling and honestly that's why public service seems to be calling me. I practiced the law, I, practiced, I practically perfected it. I've seen injustice in the world and I've corrected it. Uh, now for a strong central democracy, if not, then I'll be Socrates, that one verbal rocks at these mediocrities. Hamilton at the Constitutional Convention. I was chosen for the Constitutional Convention. There is a New York Junior delegate. Now what I'm gonna say may sound indelicate. <laughs> Proposes his own form of government. What is own plan for a new form of government? Talks for six hours. This convention is listless. Right, young man. Yo, who the F is this? Why do you always say what you believe? Why do you always say what you believe? Every proclamation guarantees free ammunition for your enemies. Why do you write like it's going out of style? Write day and night like it's going out of style. Every day you fight like it's going out of style. Do what you do and... Alexander, Aaron Burr, sir. It's the middle of the night. Can we confer, sir? Is this a legal matter? Yes, and it's important to me. What do you need? Burr, you're a better lawyer than me. Okay. I know I talk too much. I'm abrasive. You're incredible in, in court. You're succinct, persuasive. My client needs a strong defense. You're the solution. Who's your client? The new U.S. Constitution. What? No way. Hear me out. In a series of essays anon anonymously published defending the document to the public. No one will read it. I disagree. And if it fails, burr, that's why we need it. The Constitution's a mess, so it needs amendments. It's full of contradictions. So is independence. We have to start somewhere. No. No way. You're making a mistake. Good night. Hey, what are you waiting for? What do you stall for? We won the war. What was it all for? Do you support this Constitution? Then defend it. What if you're backing the wrong horse? Burr, we studied and we fought and we killed for the notion of a nation we now get to build. For once in your life, take a stand with pride. I don't understand how you stand to the side. I'll keep all my plans close to my chest. I'll wait here and see which way the wind will blow. I'm taking my time watching the afterbirth of a nation, watching the tension grow. I am sailing off to London. I am accompanied by someone who always pays. I have found a wealthy husband who will keep me in comfort for all my days. He is not a lot of fun, but there is no one who can match you for turn of phrase, my Alexander. Angelica, don't forget to write. Look at where you are. Look at where you've started. The fact that you're alive 
is a miracle. Just stay alive. That would be enough. And if your wife could share a fraction of your time, if I could grant you peace of mind, would that be enough? Alexander joins forces with James Madison and John Jay to write a series of essays defending the United States Constitution entitled The Federalist Papers. The plan was to write a total of 25 essays, the work divided evenly among three men. In the end, they wrote 85 essays in a span of six months. John Jay got sick after writing five. James Madison wrote 29. Hamilton wrote the other 51. How do you write like you're running out of time? Write day and night like you're running out of time. Every day you fight like you're running out of time. Running out of time. Are you running out of time? How do you write like tomorrow won't arrive? How do you write like to, you need it to survive? How do you write every second you're alive, every second you're alive, every second you're alive? They're asking me to lead. I'm doing the best I can to get the people that I need. I'm asking you to be my right-hand man. Treasure your state. I know it's a lot to ask, to leave behind the world you know. Sir, would you like me to run the Treasury or State Department? Treasury. Let's go. Alexander, I have to leave. Alexander, look around, look around at how lucky we are to be alive right now. Helpless, they're asking me to lead. Look around, isn't this enough? He will never be satisfied. He will never be satisfied, satisfied. History has its eyes on you. In the room, there's like four lines happening simultaneously, which means I need three other very talented ASM artists to do a full length Hamilton with me. <laughs> That'd be so cool. You will never be satisfied, satisfied, satisfied. Wouldn't it be enough? Da 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 da. Something, something, something. I am not throwing away my shot.